We'd like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth. We're here at SagePolicy.com, the one and only Anubhan Basu, CEO. How are you, sir? Doing fine. Good, good. Well, from the George Bush years to how this president is doing, I'm hearing a lot of uh, criticism of what he should be doing, what, what needs to be done. Where are we after eight years of George Bush? And, and my understanding is that during the Bush administration, seemingly uh, most every economic uh, factor indicator, uh, they, they weren't looking good at all. Right. I, but it's, it's interesting, your question, because you are putting the economy in the context of these two presidents, Barack Obama and George Bush, but in fact it's not clear how much control or influence presidents have upon the economy. I mean, it is often the case that people judge whether or not they like a president or not by economic outcomes, but in fact there are much broader forces. And one of the forces during the Bush years was that we as the American people overdid it. We spent too much money, we borrowed too much, we speculated too much on our own homes, we bought too many homes, we built too many homes, we built too much office space, so on and so forth. Money was easily available at the time, it seemed like the economy would grow forever, and so these things were done and it has ended very badly. If you want to blame George Bush, you can. Some people blame, blame Bill Clinton for this. Some people may actually blame Barack Obama, even though much of this happened even before he considered running for president. But in any case, the point is that it takes a lot of time to undo a lot of bad, foolish acts. And so we are right now in a nation with a 9.6% unemployment rate, with a housing market that's really not going any place right now, with distressed commercial real estate, and looking forward to a 2011 that I think will be quite sluggish in terms of growth. Again, because you know, there's just not a lot of demand out there. And indeed, to the extent that we see demand, we see it only from two sources. Consumers, who in my judgment, some of whom are spending too much money presently because they think things are back to normal, they're not. And the other, of course, the federal government, which continues to spend uh, quite freely, a source of outrage among some. And of course, other people give great thanks to federal assistance. One of the criticisms that I hear of this current president is that he put millions and billions into bailing out the banking, uh, the, the Wall Street, the, the financial uh, situation. Should he, could he have done something differently? Your thoughts? Well, I mean, again, it's not clear who did the bailouts because, in fact, if you think about the bank bailouts, the for instance, the money that went to the banks under the Troubled Assets Relief Program, that was largely done during the waning days of the Bush administration. TARP is largely a creature of the former Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson. And I would tell you that uh, in many ways, it has been a pretty good policy. Uh, you know, it's not as if people want to give taxpayer dollars to the banks. No one wants to do that, I can assure you. But it also makes sense that we don't want our largest banks, particularly our largest banks, to fail. Because we know what happened when Lehman Brothers failed in September of 2008, it sent the entire global uh, economy into a tailspin. Imagine what would have happened had even larger banks. Well, what would have happened? Well, I think it would have been, you know, I, if you look at the paper recently written by Mark Zandi uh, and Blinder, the Zandi Blinder paper suggests that had all of the various forms of stimulus not taken place, whether TARP or TALF or the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, so on and so forth, had that not occurred, there would have been a second Great Depression. Uh, and because the U.S. economy in various forms has received roughly $4 trillion worth of support, we avoided that. Yes, a deep recession, but not a depression, which is defined as a 10% decline in GDP from peak to trough. That didn't happen. The decline in gross domestic product was closer to 4%. Still severe, but not a depression. And so, it w But the point is, was the money invested wisely? In other words, if you're going to spend $4 trillion, do we get as much impact as we ought to have? And I will tell you, and you know, maybe some of the viewers uh, may, not, may not agree with this, but um, I think that the monies um, that uh, are associated with the $800 billion stimulus package passed in February of 2009, those monies were largely wasted. That uh, those $800 billion were not invested wisely, have, have not uh, in the aggregate generated sustained economic momentum for the American people. Even before half those uh, monies had been spent, we were asking the question, should we have another stimulus package? Because this one is just not working very well. Much of that $800 billion has already been spent, and the impact has not been particularly significant. And you could have solved so many American problems with that money. You could have been, built high-speed rail 
for instance, between Baltimore and Washington, D.C., for just $14 billion. $14 billion is a lot of money, but not as a fraction of an $800 billion package. You would have put downtown Baltimore, just 14 minutes from downtown Washington, the roof would have come off the joint. Property values here would have soared. Job creation would be rampant. Unemployment would collapse. But that did not happen. Instead, they spent, to the extent that they put money into infrastructure, which was not to a significant degree, they put that money largely into road resurfacing. That's hardly transformative. And of course, that road resurfacing, those projects will have to be done again sometime in the future. And so where have you really brought us? Not very far. And so this is one of the reasons that we've really continued to dig a deeper hole for ourselves. Um, not just at the consumer level, but now at the federal level, it's problematic. Interestingly, we interviewed former Mayor Sheila Dixon a couple of weeks ago, and she mentioned that very thing about investing in infrastructure and roads and highways. And I think you've helped to uh, illuminate what, what that means e even more. Well, I mean, what we could have done, for instance, the city of Baltimore is facing an enormous burden in terms of investing in its water and wastewater treatment. Uh, and uh, this is going to burden the taxpayer for many years to come. With the stimulus package, you could have helped cities like Baltimore deal with those issues more forcefully. I'm not suggesting that there was not any assistance. There was some, simply not enough, because only $135 billion out of that $800 billion package went into infrastructure. And as I say, a lot of it went into road resurfacing. But what I would have preferred to have seen is much more of that money going to things that would help America transform herself, fix the electrical grid, fix water systems across the country, put more money into disabled bridges, put more money into high-speed rail, put more money into natural gas exploration, put more money into nuclear power plant development. That's where it could have gone. And you would have solved a lot of problems in the process and created a lot of solutions in the process, and by the way, create a lot of jobs in the process. But instead, what do we get? To the extent that we get anything into, in, into infrastructure, road resurfacing, not transformative. One other criticism, and, and thank you again for your time, is uh, one, I hear the everyday person saying, put in a, a bailout package for the American people, individuals. And then also I'm hearing a criticism that he's, his inner circle, President Obama's inner circle, does not, uh, does not have businessmen. Do you find that to be so? Yeah, I, don't, I have not found the Obama administration to particularly understand the ways of business, but also I don't think that businesses have done much to have that conversation with Barack Obama either about what businesses need. You know, all I've heard from businesses is we don't like cap and trade, but I presume those businesses also don't like global warming. And so there's, you know, there is room for compromise along that dimension, or at least there should be a conversation about what America needs to do about carbon emissions as an example. Many people tell me about, uh, well, we don't like healthcare reform. Okay, I understand that, but we had 45 million un Americans without insurance. And so I would agree that healthcare reform as it was passed has massive problems, massive issues, massive unintended consequences. Nonetheless, one of the reasons it took that form is because we as Americans no longer can have fruitful conversations. We just yell at each other and want to make each other look bad. And you're not gonna get, you know, you're not gonna get much progress that way and we don't have much progress that way. And now in Washington DC, of course, we have even more divided government. And so you can imagine what the conversation will look like going forward, not particularly productive. It's one of the reasons to be pessimistic about the near-term outlook in America. Good deal. Thank you for your time. Any final thought? That's it. Good deal. The one and only Anabon Basu, CEO of the Sage Policy Institute, website sagepolicy.com. Again, thank you. Keep watching bemorenews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth.